you just joined us on the system after dark. This is a homegrown number, courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. Good evening, this is FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. In this bulletin, Sadalpa Management Board meets without party president. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbani Marama hits out at opposition for not speaking out against seditious activities. And the Morsi landowners want mineral exploration to stop. The Social Democratic Liberal Party Management Board has just finished meeting at the party head office in Suva. This is despite the Sadalpa President Ratunai Ngama Lalambalavu, who is also the board chairman, still out of the country. The meeting was chaired by Sudelpa's Vice President, Ratu Silivenusi Wangausa, along with Ratu Lote Yavuda and other board members. Party official Cholame Ulundole says the meeting has resolved that a four-member investigating team will look into the board. Until the investigation is completed, the party is in no position to release any further information. Repeated attempts to get comments from opposition MP Moses Mbulitavu were futile when this bulletin was prepared. Bulitavu had last week announced that he would resign if the Sudalpa leader Rote Mumukepa did not step down. However, his ultimatum is now pending the decision of the management board. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama has criticized the opposition for not speaking out against seditious activities in Ra and Nadronga that was aimed at creating separate states for the two provinces. Mbaini Marama brought up the issue during debate on a motion to create a retirement home industry in the country. Eleanor Turangai view with this report. About the stability of this nation. Not mincing his words, Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama says we need stability in Fiji following the events in the Western Division in the past couple of months. We are not going to get stability if we have people rallying up the poor, the vulnerable in our community to bring up what they bring up actions that they've done in the last couple of two months. Bani Marama attacked opposition MP William Walker for speaking out against the military and adds he should be investigated after he was allegedly seen in Lotoka wanting to visit those held on sedition charges. And his comment was, <laughs> when his comment was, I'm here to support whoever supports Odelpo's cause. The Honourable Member, Deputy Speaker, should be investigated by the police for that comment alone. The Prime Minister also criticised opposition MP Tupondro Nindalo for attacking the military. This morning, member of FN and NFP termed the RFMF as a terrorist group. She's already come out openly to say that the RFMF had removed her, her stepfather. She's trying to personalize the RFMF now. I, I request that uh, she doesn't do that. This prompted a reply from Dalo and the leader of opposition, Rote Mumukepa. Now, I did say that there was only one institution that was causing instability in the country. That was my very point. That was my point said with no, uh, no dislike or anything for the institution. I'm if he has any proof, take it to the courts and let the courts decide. Bani Marama also pointed out in Parliament, the opposition has never spoken out against the sedition's activities. Eleanor Turangaiwiu, FBC News. Opposition leader Rote Mumukepa says the statement issued by the Sudalpa president calling for a symposium on indigenous issues is a matter for the Prime Minister Vurenge Mbani Marama. However, Rote Mumu would neither confirm nor deny whether she had anything to do with the contents of the statement. Other than a symposium, Ratunangama also called for the release of the 70 people accused of seditious related activities in Ra and Nandronga. The Prime Minister has, uh, has addressed uh, that particular issue because it was uh, directed to him. So I would leave it to the Prime Minister and uh, Thank you. 
The Prime Minister has since lashed out at Ratanangama's statement, calling it a cheap publicity stunt by a suspended MP. The Tikina Namosi Landowners Committee is demanding for answers from the Ministry of Lands on how a further five-year extension to the exploration license for minerals was granted to Namosi Joint Venture. Ali Kimbia has the story. After seven years of negotiations started between landowners, the Namosi Joint Venture and the Department of Mineral Resources on the exploration of minerals in Namosi, the disagreements continue to arise. For so long now, the exploration has done a lot of damage to our environment in Namusi. I am worried about my people and all the nearby villages as this has destroyed what we rely for every day and it has polluted our rivers as well. The Tikina Namoshi Land Owners Committee claims that Lands Minister Mericeni Buniwanga renewed the license without the knowledge or consent of the land owners. The first of, first of May 2015, TNLC wrote to Buniwanga, Minister Lands, informing her about TNLC's stance for SPL 1420. The fifth in the meeting with the Minister Mericeni, Mericeni Buniwanga, yet government never listened. 13 of August 2015, a letter was written to the Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Borenga Ben Marama, seeking his intervention on corrupt practices by the Ministry of Lands. Lands Minister Mericeni Buniwanga says consultations were done before the license given to Nemoshi Joint Venture was extended. The result of the consultations we were happy with. We also did um, environmental assessments uh, from uh, what the company had given us. We verified it with our environmental officers. We verified what the company had given us. We were happy both with the environmental assessments and also with the social um, uh, verifications we carried out before the renewal of the license. So yes, I confirmed the license was renewed and government was due, did its due diligence before that was done. The Namoshi land owners now calling on the government to completely stop the exploration of minerals in the province. Alekimbia, FBC News. The wife of the 52-year-old man who is still missing at sea is keeping her hopes alive that her husband will return home soon. Anita Krishna says she and her two children are still hopeful that her husband Sashi Krishna will return home. The 52-year-old Lautoka man is believed to have fallen overboard whilst on a fishing trip near Vomo Island last Saturday. The matter was reported to the Lautoka police station on Sunday and a search for Krishna ensued. Mrs. Krishna says her husband is the sole breadwinner for the family. I want my husband back. Can you help me? Please. My children are waiting. My two children are waiting for father. They want a father. When was, Please. The, uh, when was the last time you met your, so your husband? After school holiday. Coming up after the break, Fiji Television Limited overstaffed and right sizing could happen in the immediate future. The motion to establish a retirement home in Fiji was defeated in Parliament this morning following a lengthy debate. 13 MPs voted against the motion moved by the opposition member Viliame Gavoka. Shireen Lata reports. A lot of our people. Opposition MP Viliame Gavoka says people who retire need medical care the most. He says establishing a retirement home will be the way forward in providing better services and facilities to the elderly and will also attract retirees from abroad to the country. One of the reasons. The elderly are not visiting Fiji today is because they are not comfortable with what we have here in terms of medical facilities. Um, this will help boost... Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama opposed the motion. People who go into retirement homes want tertiary care. And that's what you should be uh, getting to first. 
hospital assistance and that's uh, and I want to tell him that uh, the uh, members of the side have got that covered. Attorney General Ayas Sayyad Khayyum says in order to establish a retirement home, Fiji will need a full tertiary medical facility. When you have a retirement uh, village set up or retirement homes, somebody may get a heart attack. They need cardiovascular surgery done on them. We don't have that available drop of a hat. The Honorable Minister for Health cannot pluck out cardiologists from thin air. Cardiologists need to be trained for about 10, 15, 20 years. Twelve MPs voted in favor of the motion and eight did not vote. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Employees at Fiji Television Limited have officially been told that the media giant is overstaffed and there may be a need for right-sizing in the immediate future. Fiji Holdings, the parent company of Fiji TV, confirms it's been reviewing staff numbers since taking over. Edwin Nunn reports that this information comes amid confirmation that some staff are already on their way out. Word has trickled down to Fiji TV staff that current numbers are too high but FHL Chief Executive Nuzab Farid denies that there will be layoffs. For, for us to carry on this business, maybe we don't need uh, 150 people to do so. So uh, what exactly we are trying to do is right-sizing. Uh, we have never told that uh, our staff, please go. No, we are not telling that. But in case if somebody is willing to go from the company, uh, we are willing to assist. But I'm, I can categorically deny there is no redundancy policy as such. However, according to reliable sources within Fiji TV, some staff members have been asked to resign as part of a right-sizing exercise. It's also been confirmed that other staff members will be given their marching orders soon. Farid says the process is still in the early days and they don't have a numbers breakdown for what would be appropriate staffing at Fiji TV. He also adds FHL has the option to redeploy employees among its other business arms. Right sizing means, yes, a sort of a downsizing, but it doesn't mean that uh, people have to leave the group. If somebody is leaving, we are willing to assist. If not, there is plenty of room within the group. We are, we, uh, there some of the companies in the group need staff. So definitely a group within the intercompany transfer within the group is a common thing. Reid adds the split from Sky Pacific and the upcoming sale of EMTV are some of the reasons why the Fiji one arm of the business needs to become lean. Edwin Nand. FBC News. Traffic stakeholders will now strengthen sharing of information and expertise when dealing with traffic management. This is a new step in ensuring road safety for the betterment of the Fijian people. Savaratambua has more. Traffic stakeholders, which include the police, the Land Transport Authority, Fire Services, St. John Ambulance, Municipalities, Fiji Roads Authority and Ministry of Transport, have been advised on the importance of sharing information to make a work easier. They have been told that uh, despite being managed by different legislations and guided by different policies, they must enhance prompt response when dealing with traffic management. That uh, does not limit us in terms of uh, investigation, in terms of enforcement and overall pulsing uh, in, uh, on our road that uh, how best the key stakeholders can assist the Fiji police force and how best the Fiji police force can provide uh, relevant information and also work together in terms of uh, addressing some of the emerging issues. Participants had shared various issues they need to be addressed which will assist in the operation. We would like to raise the problem concerning the drivers who always give false identity. St. John's decision has been here for a while and uh, I think one of the major things we're looking at and we're looking for right now is transport. Stakeholders were also briefed on the improvement of the existing transportation infrastructure, creating awareness and safety tips for pedestrians and monitoring of issues that will address road safety. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. And Jamie joins us now with a preview of what's coming up in sports. Thank you, Jackie, and good evening. After the break, we take a look at the Flying Fijians' last training run at home. And Fiji football side defeats Samoa 6 0 in Friendly International. This and more coming up.
छू 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 हे हे नमस्ते फिर जी आपके हर एक प्रॉब्लम के दवा लेकर मैं आ गई हूँ नौ से बारह बजे तक आपकी सहेली रेनो छू 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 फोर्टी ने ट्वेंटी का दिखना है मैं हूँ ना आपके साथ में मिर्ची एफएम पर पर नौ ऐसी बारह बजे तक मंडे टू फ्राइडे मिर्ची साथ The Vodafone flying Fijians have wrapped up training in the country as they prepare to leave for the Rugby World Cup on Monday. Today involved team building and fitness with players put through an unusual training pattern. Interesting reports. This was no ordinary training as the flying Fijians team management put the players through a different type of training run this morning. Yeah, so we're combining a bit of uh, fitness with uh, team building and you, you saw the boys there. Uh, working in teams to to carry one of their team members on the stretcher over a bit of a relay course. Uh, yeah, it's been a bit of fun, but it, but it ticks a couple of fitness boxes as well. Maki says all the work needed to be done at home is complete, and now it's mission England. We're flying towards that first game, that's for sure. The days just and the weeks are going past very very quickly. It has been a hard couple of weeks for the players as they tried to get into the required shape. You know, right through from the start when they came in for the PNC, and then it's lifted again in the last two weeks. So we're in good space. Uh, I think the boys are in good heart, good mind. So um, and they're up for the challenge. Now it's time to fly out to England and get on with the task which comes once every four years. Good management of the, of, the, of the travel so we don't have too much fatigue when we get to the UK. Now we really need to hit the ground running up there as well. It was an early morning start for the Vodafone Flying Fijians. It was a team building exercise which will be very necessary when they take the field at the Rugby World Cup. The boys struggled, the ones on the stretchers sort of enjoying themselves, but in all it was a great team bonding and team building ahead of the Rugby World Cup. Interesting. FBC Sports. Meanwhile, two players who are tipped to start in every Fiji game at the Rugby World Cup say they are ready for the challenge. Wing Aseili Tikurutuma and Hukato Pati Talomai Tonga are at the peaks of their career and are honored to be part of the Flying Fijians. Interesting with more. Aseli Tiko Irotuma may have won Super Rugby title while playing for the Chiefs, but says the World Cup is bigger stage than anything else in the rugby fraternity. Uh, is that's totally two different games. Uh, Super Rugby is different. This is totally different because I'm fighting for my country. The wing who now plays his trade in England says it's been a dream come true for him to play at this World Cup. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's been pretty hard uh, in these last few weeks we've been training. So, uh, yeah, because expectation against... Uh, all the countries that, that is in our pool, uh, we need to be we need to be fit. So our preparation has been good so far. On the other hand, Huka Tua Party Tale Maitonga is off to his second World Cup, but says this year it will be bigger than ever before. Yes, um, I think we prepare well as a team, like um, on the field and off the field. I think it's, um, it's no excuse now for us. I think we're gonna do our best. <laughs> Rake will fight for a starting spot in the position with the likes of Sunia Koto and William Evecoso and is ready to stake a claim. We, we talk about what we need on the field, so we need to have some good balls from like from set piece so we, the, our backline can play well. And the common factor for the two? Yeah, all, all the family and friends, uh, they, they're happy that uh, I've made it into this, this World Cup team, so I've, I've just got to gotta make them proud. Yes, they're pretty happy. They're proud of what I'm being achieved. Um, my mom and dad are in Suva, and um, my, my partner and my kids are in Nizza. They're pretty proud of what I'm what I achieved. Duo, along with the other 29 players in the team, have a task on their hand, but belief and teamwork is keeping all hopes alive. Interesting, FBC Sports. Earlier today, the Flying Fijians were hosted to a farewell lunch by the British High Commission. Deputy High Commissioner Daniel Salter was on hand to meet the team and presented them with gifts as a token of the Commission's best wishes. He said the team will be playing in front of thousands and is sure to stamp its mark on the world stage. 
Meanwhile, last night, the Prime Minister and President of the Fiji Rugby Union hosted the team to a farewell cocktail, which doubled up, doubled up as a fundraiser for the side. He reminded the team that they are, on the, they are the ambassadors of this country and nothing should hinder their performance at the World Cup. Baini Marama also had a timely message for the flying Fijians. We don't want 14 players playing on the field. We want 15-man game. We don't want you to play a 70-man, 70-minute game. We want you to play an 18-minute game like you played against the Samoans in your last outing. Controversy marked the beginning of the Digital Punzas National Netball Series with umpires boycotting the event before it even began. Teams had to wait for more than two hours before the tournament got underway as organizers had to seek the services of team officials from various districts to call the matches. We will have to address it because, uh, you know, uh, netball is, is bigger than all of us. Eh? Uh, executives, it's bigger than the umpires and we are here for the players. Yes, we did agree to all their demands, but it's not because we are weak. It's because at the end of the day, we are here for those ladies, those young ladies that are in the court. The star-studded Suva side, laced with national reps such as Maria Lutua and Nina Virikisuva, was the form team on day one, cruising through undefeated in the pool stages. Other teams that could challenge Suva are Nandrunga with the likes of Matila Wanganinrola and Nasinu with the services of Terema Mitchell. The finals will be held tomorrow. The Vodafone Fiji football side defeated American Samoa 6-0 in a friendly international last night. Tayona Kerinovanua's first half goal gave Fiji the lead at the break. Both teams ended the game with 10 men after red cards to Colineo Sivoki and American Samoa's Demetrius Bukamp. Fiji's other goals came from Tevita Warainivalu, Osea Bakatelesau and two from Napoleon Ingasipakatini. They, were, they, they closed down very quick, uh, the, the, the first half they play very hard and you need to play very, very similar in, in, in the way you need to do things with the ball. But... The match was held at Prince Charles Park in Nandi. Skyline Fiji Police Football IDC defending champions Northern received a lifeline today and has qualified for the semi-finals of the competition. Northern qualifiers runners up from Pool 1 with three points, while Western 2 go into the, draw, go into the semi-finals as Pool 1 leaders. Eastern 1 has also qualified from Pool 2. The police side is doing its best to avoid Army from winning the Sukuna Bowl, Bowl title for the third year in a row. For the last two years, as I've mentioned, mentioning that uh, uh, the military has been taking the cup and uh, we have the divisional reps is also part of the selection committee and uh, we'll be selecting good players, the best players to, to represent the Fiji police uh, soccer team uh, in this, uh, this year's uh, Sukuna Bowl. The semi-finals and final will be played tomorrow at the Nasova Grounds in Suva. That's it from Sports Tonight. It's back to Jackie with business. <laughs> Attorney General Ayo Said Kayum says a strategic location for a high temperature forced air treatment facility would have to be closer to the airport. Currently, Nature's Way Fiji Limited is the only facility providing HFTA services for Fiji's export products. Said Kayum says immediately after the products are given heat treatment, they are shipped to its destination. He was responding to questions in Parliament on the possibility of establishing more such facilities to help exporters. The idea is to have those facilities close by to wherever the point of transportation is to, for export. So if we, for example, have the facilities somewhere that is not close by, there could also then be the risk of infiltration by those very, you know, uh, fruit flies or whatever you may, to avoid that along the way to the airport it could get into. So generally you find these facilities are close by to the, uh, to the, uh, you know, the site of transportation. NZMPR had suspended Fiji's export temporarily, claiming anomalies in one of the shipments, but later accepted they had made a mistake. Fine weather prevailed over the country today, although there's still a chance of some evening showers in Suva and Savu Savu. Temperatures remain steady in the 20s in most centers. 28 degrees was the high in three places. Tomorrow's forecast is for more fine weather over the group, with a slight chance of a few showers in the capital and in Savu Savu. The further outlook fine apart from brief few showers over the interior southern and eastern parts of the larger islands, cool at night. And the main points again. 
Sudelpa Management Board meets with our party president to discuss complaints against party leader. Prime Minister Burenge Mbani Marama hits out at opposition for not speaking out against seditious activities, and the Morsi landowners want mineral exploration to stop. On to our poll question, and this week we're asking, are current measures for public service vehicle inspection adequate? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. Be sure to join Amrita Priyadarshini from tomorrow with our weekend bulletin. I'll be back again on Monday. Till then, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Nimodamanda.